Steve Jobs once said, innovation distinguishes between a leader and a follower. So what exactly does it take to be a good leader? Many think leaders get others to do all the work, or that leadership is a trait only certain individuals possess. But in reality, anyone can be a leader. What is leadership? The traits of a leader can be defined in many ways. The main characteristics are communication, sharing goals, and adaptable to changing circumstances within the group. Leadership is the influence which is the use of interpersonal power to motivate others to actively participate and communicate. Leadership is being a person who applies interpersonal influence on a group to achieve its set goals. When Steve Jobs had his small team to design the original Macintosh, his command was to make it insanely great, he said. Don't worry about the price. Specify the computer's abilities and don't compromise. By driving his team not to compromise, he kept his eye on the original goal until he conquered it. There are five sources of interpersonal power according to Bertram Raven and John French. Reward, referent, information, expertise, and ecological are the identified interpersonal powers. Group leaders usually have an influence beginning with more than one of these powers. Reward power is someone's ability to give others a wanted value, and the punishment side of it comes from the ability to also take it away. Praise and encouragement have a large influence of power. The intangible side would be frowning or ignoring someone. Corazon is a form of punishment involving threatening a group member in order to comply. Expertise is a power I think we are all familiar with. This is an individual with impeccable knowledge or skill that is valuable to the group. Although having this power does not always guarantee that a member will be the leader, Steve Jobs believes that deciding what not to do is just as important as deciding what to do. Having expertise will allow you to choose your resources wisely and carefully. A referent power is someone we admire or strive to be like. Sometimes we set a role model for ourselves and work towards being similar to that person. As social beings, we long for people to like us back. When we want to be like someone else, it gives them tremendous power over us. We will often do what that person is asking of us, even if we know it is wrong strictly to gain their liking. The information power involves the amount of control a leader has over certain information. This can consist of the amount of access other group members have to information, giving the leader what the most access to information the appearance of expertise. By allowing group members controlled information, they build a dependence on the leader for his or hers information. The way the leader distributes the information to the members allows him the control over how they also interpret this information. The last power is the ecological power. This is the indirect influence initiating from the ability to control the organization and environment of the group. We don't always notice how our surroundings affect the outcome of our work and behavior. The first thing a good leader does is it establishes goals and makes sure the group starts in the right direction. In order to have an effective group, all members must understand and support the goals of the group. Otherwise, it may be necessary for the leader to make the decision to remove them. Employees were recruited to Apple as specialists and jobs put them into groups according to their specific strengths and abilities. He was a strong supporter of his visions that he had and was greatly effective in communicating his ideas with his staff. Jobs mentioned, it takes a lot of hard work to make something simple, to truly understand the underlying challenges and come up with elegant solutions. 
His goal was to always focus on the products as your main motivation and the profits will follow. Secondly, leaders need to form the members into groups to guarantee an environment for a conductive teamwork. The entire Pixar building was designed for the interaction of the staff. Jobs encouraged the communication because he thought that without it you would lose the innovation that derives from interaction and getting out of the office. Effective leaders monitor this behavior and make sure it's collaborative and group members can feel confident speaking out and sharing their ideas. Thirdly, group leaders always keep their goals in mind and motivate the group to work towards them. Steve Jobs stated, People join and stay because they believe in the mission of the company, even if they aren't personally happy. That is the foundation of a powerful group. Jobs is known for his gruff mannerisms, but his innate talent for envisioning and delivering breakthrough products and his natural gift for complete focus are what made him successful. He would take his top 100 employees on a retreat each year and ask them, what 10 things should we be doing next? We can only do three. By maintaining a focus on three products, he was able to keep his goals in mind about making great products for his customers instead of creating numerous mediocre products. Despite how impatient and tough Jobs was on the people around him, he was brutally honest and drove his employees to achieve perfection. Fourthly, a good leader helps members develop their talents and build confidence within the team. Steve Jobs always challenged his teams to reach beyond what they thought was impossible. Sure, Jobs could have possibly achieved the same results by approaching his team differently, but that wasn't who he was. Those who have worked with him admitted that it led them to perform on an extraordinary level, even though working with him could be exasperating. Lastly, a good leader does not take their position for granted. They consistently work at becoming a better leader. After starting the company from scratch in 1985, after going bankrupt, taught jobs, discipline, and patience. Job's leadership style was quite complex. He was focused when he was committed to something, he was confident in taking risks, and his charismatic ways helped him bring his employees and customers along with him in his own ambitious journey. Dr. Brent Coker from the University of Melbourne's management and marketing faculty described him as one of the greatest business strategics of all times. Whether a person is assigned leadership or emerges from the same status and becomes a leader, how you manage your team and drive them to a goal is how you become a great leader. As Steve Jobs said, stay hungry, stay foolish.